So we just came back from a full day of adventures and I don't really know how to say this. It's so kind of, it's still kind of early, I guess with the videos, a lot of you guys might even know what I'm about to say, <laughs> but it still feels crazy to say it aloud in front of the camera, but I guess I'm just going to say it. Morning, bro. Morning. At what point does it start to get shallow again? Uh, still in 40 meters. Here. Really? Well, yeah. it's 40 meters right now. Mm. That's crazy. So I see a blue mooring on the other side of their dive boat. Hello. Morning. Morning. Yeah. Thank you so much, bro. We'll see you guys later. Yeah, yeah, we'll see you later on. Okay. Have a good day, okay? You too. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. Welcome to Dominica, guys. Welcome to the next three weeks of our lives. Mm-hmm. We made it to Dominica. <laughs> Dominica is an island that is known for its natural, rugged, wild beauty. Um, it has wild parrots. It's known for its waterfalls and jungles and scuba diving. And it's actually a very progressive country as well. Um, they are set to become the first country ever to ban all single-use plastics. So it's a really cool place and the way of life here on Dominica is honestly, I think, the way that life is meant to be lived. Hey, I have one question for you. What's, what's that question? When you hear the word Dominica, it's the first thing you had to go, first thing. Hurricane. All right. And parrots. Scuba diving parrots. And whales. That's three things, sorry. <laughs> I know that it's the only place in the world that has a resident population of sperm whales, or one of two places, I think. I know it's called the nature island of all the Caribbean, which is pretty impressive because they're all very natural. And I know we're here right now, and we're gonna have an amazing few weeks here. When, when you think of Dominica, what's the first thing that pops into your head? Romance. Oh, man. Please explain. I've, so we met this dude last time we were here, which was like two years ago, and he was like, there's the three R's of Dominica. Rivers, rainbows, and romance. And I feel like romance kind of encompasses those as well. It's just kind of like a magical island that's full of like nature and yeah. nature sounds and parrots flying around and picking fresh fruit off the trees. And it's kind of like that romantic Caribbean image that you have of paradise. So it's kind of how I'd sum that up. It gets you moist. It gets you real moist, real fast. <laughs> what do I know about Dominica that you guys already haven't said? Here's a fact that I can tell you, and then you can say that you knew it if you want. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Dominica has the highest number of centarians per capita in the entire world. Dominica has the highest number of centarians per capita out of anywhere. <laughs> okay, Dominica. 
I think the first thing that pops into my head is islands of the South Pacific because when we were there, like all the islands were so lush and you could get any fruit and vegetables. And I know here Dominica is the nature island and it's also called the bread basket of the Caribbean. So like you can find fruit and vegetables literally everywhere growing on this island. We are getting some peanut punches, which is an awesome like a rum punch blended with uh, condensed milk and peanuts. It's probably not really good for you, but it is amazing. Uh, I've been craving it ever since we left here. So should I, I go first? Yeah, man. It's in your hand. Oh, I don't even taste any alcohol. It's really good. It tastes like a little smoothie from Baskin Robbins or something. Bring me back to my childhood days. Oh, that's damn good. It's like a alcoholic Reese's peanut butter cup kind of. There's Kelsey, and we have to go over there to check into the country. Good, how are you, man? Yes, I'm positive, my love. What's your name? Well, you call me True True. True True? True True. That's and a good I'm known. Thanks very much, baby. What do you yes. have here? A new compliment, you gorgeous. Thank you, you're gorgeous mm -hmm. too. Thank you very much, my love. <laughs> Sisters, how are you doing? Yeah. Positive, yeah. yeah. And there, True. Do you mind if I take, you, take a picture of you with your, yeah, with your work? Yeah, yeah with your work. I've been in Dominica for about. Oh. 30 minutes on land and I can feel an incredible amount of like love and just welcoming to the island. So cool so far, what a good energy. Brady was right. The vibe on Dominica was instantly different compared to the other Caribbean islands we had seen. But it hadn't been an easy couple of years for them. And we would come to find out that they were just getting back to a normal way of life after Hurricane Maria devastated the island in 2017. Well, Hurricane Maria began its murderous tear through the Atlantic by slamming into the tiny island nation of Dominica. At least 14 people are dead. It was a Cat 5 hurricane when it hit there. U.S. forecasters say Maria is a potentially catastrophic hurricane. This is the predicted route. The island of Dominica, the first place to be hit. Prime Minister, in fact, made several urgent posts on Facebook saying his roof had been ripped off, his house was flooding, and communication was nearly non-existent on the island. This road used to pass all from this side to that side. There's a car lodged up here, uh, a pickup truck. Can you, can you tell us anything about when the hurricane came through last year? Were you on the island? Well, I would say, well, to be here, you would, be, you would have to be a very brief person, you know, because I can tell you straight from what I, I experienced, from myself, my family, it was really, really, really sad. Of course, we didn't know it was going to be a Category 5 until the last moment when we could not move. Uh, when the first part of the, rain, of the hurricane hit Dominica, all I heard was, boom, my roof is gone. So my children, my wife, everybody gets scared and they were crying and I was the only one there trying to give them a little sense of hope. I hear from the eastern part, strange noise. Yeah, I heard like, but I'm putting into the temple. Imagine I slept in water for the whole night. In the sink, the shower, whole night. In, imagine sleeping in water. Besides, you know, the smell, the smell of the muddy water and the stuff coming is really scary. Yeah. Yeah, uh, brown water and it's roaring and it's not kidding. You know, and you can get a heart attack if you don't have a strong heart and a strong mind and a strong will to stay alive right there, you could die. Um, what I did notice was the current generation, they freaked out a little more than, than what I knew. And the reason is they're into phones. They have, you know, this technology. They got up the next morning, none of the phones were working. So they think that the world was going to end. 
a lot of young people just left the island. I know of people who had good jobs, government jobs. They were gone. They didn't figure out from the supervisors what needed to be done. They were gone. So they, they didn't understand what it was that when a hurricane comes, it's a major disaster, you stay put and you organize your life to suit the situation, you know? It's been a year and two months. Uh, about a year, year and two months. And, and how has the island recovered so far? Very, 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 very well. Very well? Yes. There's much more to do, but I think um, so far, so good. And the community came together? Yes. I was surprised very quickly. <laughs> yeah. We did, everybody did, everybody played their part. They cleaned the roads and everything. And well, the government did what they had to do also. I cleaned up in my community, other people cleaned up the community, and it was just fantastic. Yeah, so we can breathe some sense of hope again. Yeah. <laughs> the water is good, the power is coming back, the, the Wi Fi and internet services are being restored, um, all of the roads are open, the hospital is swinging, so life is pretty much getting back to normal, you know. Yeah. <laughs> cool, thank you man. You're welcome. That's great. We, we, we just want to tell your story to the world, you know? That's cool. And have more people come visit your beautiful island. Yeah. What's happening today, Nate Dog? Today we're going on an adventure. We're going to go canyoneering with Extreme Dominica. And we're and climbing and rappelling and waterfalls and all sorts of crazy stuff, so. I'm just packing light today, huh, Jordan? <laughs> oh, you know, only the essentials. That's what the Boy Scouts taught me. Yeah. I'm ready to go. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm Brian. I'm Alex. I am Alex Laura. I'm from Atkinson. I don't think there's nowhere in the world looks like Dominica and can be like Dominica. <laughs> Why is this? Look at the camera? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can look at the camera. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. So you're going to be our driver, huh? I will. <laughs> Sit right here. It's so I love how all the vans are so big and air conditioned. Good morning, brother. How are you? Brian. You guys, what are you envisioning this to? How, you, how do you see this going down? I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun. Ooh. I think it's serious. It's not just like hanging out in some canyons floating down a river. <laughs> you look ready for some stuff. <laughs> so we got all geared up signed the legal papers and got a quick crash course in how to rappel down a cliff. Are you ready, Kaza? Okay. Yes, sir! <laughs> Woohoo! It's just really cool being here and knowing that you can only get here doing it this way. You can just hike around here. It makes it, uh, it makes it really special. And look how clear this water is! Down about 400 feet, 
But this wild canyon didn't end here. If you continue down for another hour or so, the canyon turns into this amazing waterfall. You then have to make the 125 feet rappel down the side of it. Feeling quite proud of myself that I made it this far, we decided to save that crazy adventure for another day and took the short car ride to the bottom of the falls instead. Let's do this. Wait, what do we say? Let's go check it out? Let's or go check it out. Let's make this happen. Let's do this happen. <laughs> let's do this happen. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> It's a pretty fresh landslide. I think that's a good route. Wow. I think we gotta get up to where the, the color changes, the orange. I think we'll go this way. We made it to the water. Oh, the rocks are hot. That's why it's a hot spring. That's amazing. <laughs> this place is insane. Like the pool at the top is just off the lake at the top, so it's like super cold. And then if you go on your port side, it's like hot like a jacuzzi, like a hot tub. And the night. So nice. Yeah, it's like hot water coming from here. Yeah. Cold water coming from there. Have you ever been to a hot tub at the waterfall? No. I didn't even know this existed. <laughs> Papa Pass! Nice and chilly. But I have a rainbow, which is nice. This is one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my whole life. <laughs> So we just came back from a full day of adventures. A lot of you guys might even know what I'm about to say. <laughs> and for you guys who doesn't know, this is really exciting news and we have some crazy adventures coming up. So I'm just gonna say it. Um, we're pregnant. So me and Brian are going to have a child, <laughs> which is absolutely insane to say kind of loud in front of the camera um i'm still trying to like process everything and to just get my head around like what does this mean and what does this mean for the future and all of these things but um we have been talking about you know like starting a family for a long time for actually quite a few years and it feels like we're always like oh but when we do when we get there you know when we get there it will be the perfect time and then you know like a couple of I guess yeah just a little while ago like a couple of months ago we just were like it's never gonna be a better time than now and I don't think we'll ever be at a place where it's like okay it's the perfect time to do this so <laughs> we just decided to try and yeah it went pretty fast I'm happy that you guys know now and it's gonna be coming up in the videos and I guess I might be feeling a little bit I don't know funny sometimes or can't do certain things but I'm really stoked Brian is really stoked and we just it's just a lot of happiness going on right now so it's a beautiful place we're in a beautiful country and yeah 
awesome. <laughs> it feels so weird to talk about it, but I just even feel like I get a bit red. <laughs> but I guess that's just how it is. And it feels like such a private thing to talk about, but it's life. And I'm very happy and it's a huge thing for both me and Brian and I guess for the whole boat to kind of think about, you know, like what we want to do for the future and stuff. But I think raising a kid on a boat is a pretty awesome place. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, I'm stoked to tell Brady and Alex now and see what they say. <laughs> well, you know how we've been talking about maybe trying to have a baby? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, somebody's pregnant. I knew it! <laughs> I fucking knew it! We all knew Can it! you go get a... Uh... That's why I said I see the baby God. in six God. months. Oh, oh, Thank you. Super early. I know, Super I know. Early. We're all gonna get to meet this dad. Hopefully, if things go well. You guys go get a pregnancy test the other day. Yeah. Oh, and I didn't oh, shit, what's like... it gonna look like? Oh man, oh, I'm so God. stoked. So <laughs> <many legs. laughs> it's gonna be like a Karen and Brian. Whoa. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a face swap soon. Super yeah. long eyebrows and bright blue eyes. <laughs> like anybody else. Like, I don't wanna tell mom until she's here. To know. And What's going on? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I might as well stop it now. I just wanted to get the hug, you know? Just in case we need to use that later on, right? That's awesome. You never You're know. A fucking creeper. <laughs> well, how about that for news, huh? It was so cool to tell uh, Brady and Alex and just to see the looks on their faces and the, the pure joy and the happiness and the excitement that they shared with us. You know, it's been something that we've been thinking about for quite a while. I mean, Kaz and I have been together for, what, over eight years now. I think I'm still trying to get used to the idea that, that I'm going to be a dad, that I'm going to be a parent and responsible for bringing a, a child up in this world. Um, it's a crazy adventure. Uh, it's something that I know nothing about. Uh, Karen knows nothing about, but uh, the one thing that I do know is we're a really good team and uh, I look forward to doing this together with Karen and I think it's going to be an incredible new chapter of our lives and just another adventure on the road to somewhere. Um, yeah, that's about it. I think it's dinner time so I'm going to go ahead and head out and get a bite to eat. Up next, we dive under the surface and go searching for whales. Stick them right there! Well, it's, it's hard to... What? Go ahead. That, 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 that. I know this shit, I'm gonna misquote, the Commonwealth Independent something of Dominica. That's completely wrong, probably. Pretty close, I think. Uh, something like that. It is not the Dominican Republic. I can tell you that much for certain. It was cool. <laughs> Jeez, it's like a bug flew straight into me. <laughs> Quaffing my hair, do you like it? Quaff. It's a quaffed quaffage. Good. Yeah. There we go, I got it. Locked in. Business in the front, party in the back. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you like it? I like it a lot. 